Welcome to the Impressive Human Show, brought to you by Nagging Panda. In the Impressive Human Show, we talk to impressive humans who embody a mix of business, motivation, entrepreneurship, leadership, and lifestyle. In today's Impressive Human Show, we talk to Dr. Norman Kai. He is the dentist to the stars, a pioneer and leader in teeth whitening and cosmetic dentistry, who's been going for the past four decades and is showing no signs of slowing down. The doc has dedicated his life to oral healthcare, and we talk to him about his journey to the top of his field. Look at him, he looks like a rock star. About our sponsor, Nagging Panda. Nagging Panda wants you to get paid on time, every time. If you or your business supply a product or service before receiving payment, then hashtag automate the nag. Nagging Panda is for you. Ask yourself, how much time and energy do you or your staff spend chasing down customers for late payment? Nagging Panda can save you all the headache. It's so easy because it's plug and play to have Nagging Panda remind and nag for payment through SMS, email, or actual phone call. Say goodbye to awkward conversations. Nagging Panda is everything you need in one place. Create your invoice on Nagging Panda or connect your accounting software and let Nagging Panda take it from there. Get paid faster by sending customers the Nagging Panda pay button. And if you need, use the built-in panel of debt collectors. Oh yes, and it works for quotes too. Try before you buy. Enjoy a no credit card required 30-day free trial. Sign up today at naggingpanda.com. Doc, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me in the show and thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure and thank you for joining us, Doc. I I said off camera, but you don't look like a dentist. I mean, or (laughs) a doctor. What do dentists look like? I don't know, but you you look like more of a a personality. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. That means a lot, especially coming from you. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. So... My first impression of you, so we were obviously introduced. I came to you to, to look at my teeth. Yes. I walked in and what, what I was greeted with was nothing but an immaculate business. It's a, almost a marketing marvel in dentistry. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for that um, impression. Well, it's taken a long time to get to that model. Tell us about it. How, how did you come up with this? Again, it's, it's impressive and that's why I said to you, you've got to be on the show. Tell Thank us about you. it. Well, I've been in the game for almost 40 years. Mm. Um, I'm nearly 61. So dentistry is not known to be uh, a, a, an industry where there's personality. But um, I'm glad that you feel that I've changed the perception of dentistry. And uh, today, modern dentistry is so far away from what we used to practice 30, 40 years ago. Yes. Uh, and today, it's all about marketing. I mean, people don't really care how much you know until they know how much you care. Okay, I like that. So, you know, you really need to show the care. Yes. Um, Success doesn't just happen accidentally. Success is purposeful. Yes. So I've always believed in living life with a pride, with passion, and with purpose. And if you show persistence, persistence together with purpose equals power. And that gives you Mm. power. That gives you power with the people that you treat, not over the people. There's a big difference between having power over people and having power with people. And I think that's part of my success, not doing the amazing clinical dentistry that I like to think I do, but connecting with my patients, you know, developing a rapport. Like you and I, we've become mates. Yes. I mean, it's just... And immediately, like I met you and I was like, I like this guy. Yeah, it's amazing. As long as there's authenticity. Yes. You know, you've got to be, uh, have integrity, have authenticity. Yeah. Um, Don't overstep the boundaries of professionalism, you know. Mm. Um, you can be friendly up to a point. Um, and, and that's, I think, my, my, the story of my, my success. Uh, mm. I connect with people. I've trained my staff to connect with people in a professional manner. Yes. And we enjoy the ride, you know. We, I must say teeth whitening has really revolutionized my practice because yes. it is one aspect of dentistry where people actually come to you asking for you to do the procedure. Right. I mean, not many dental no procedures. No one comes root canal. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no one comes docking in your door and says, Doc, please take out my wisdom tooth and please do, me a, do a root treatment on me. Yes. So I think I was lucky because I started teeth whitening just as it was on the cusp of becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, it, 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 it became known as the new Botox of the millennium. Yes. You know, everyone was doing Botox and all of a sudden everyone wanted whiter teeth. And I mean, I looked at this, I was living in London at, at the time and I yep. thought, you know, who doesn't want whiter teeth? 
I mean, white teeth to most people signify youth, health, beauty, and vitality. Yes. So, I mean, is, nobody can really look you in the eye and say, no, leave me with my brown yellow teeth. I enjoy them. I like them. Yeah, so, I agree. Exactly, yeah. you know. So, it's something nice to have. And patients come knocking at my door, texting me, DMing me, and saying, please, I need my teeth whitened. Sure, there's a bit of um, disadvantages. It can create a bit of sensitivity, but it's not a permanent sensitivity. It's transient. It's easily managed. It's not a dangerous procedure if done in professional hands. Mm. And, um, you know, it's the cornerstone of all aesthetic dentistry. And today I enjoy doing cosmetic and aesthetic dentistry, as well as ordinary dentistry, basic Health, health care for the family, but my passion is cosmetic and creating smiles. So my logo is creating smiles, changing lives. Yes. And, you know, we really do change lives. I mean, there have been some amazing touching stories in my career that we've, we, we've literally transformed a life. That's from, unbelievable. Fr- yeah, from somebody who's had no self-esteem, that's felt ill-treated, worthless, hopeless, useless in life, And all of a sudden, you create the smile, and you can't believe the joy, the happiness, they they exude warmth, they exude happiness, and it's touching. And to think that I've been gifted with that talent, I mean, it's a gift. Yeah. It's God's gift. I don't believe that it was my right. Yeah. It was given to me by God. I have a lot of faith. I stay true to my values, and... I thank God every day for giving me the knowledge, the wisdom, the education, the skill, the time. And I think it's time to give back. And that's why we do a lot of outreach program, which I think you'll have read about. That yes. We do do a, a lot of pro bono work for the correct people. I mean, we yes. are inundated with requests for pro bono work. I mean, we, we I'm not a charity. I can't give free dentistry to every Tom, Dick and Harry. Sure. But certainly for the right person and it's usually impoverished children or orphaned children many which are hrv Mm. that touches my heart i mean for a child to be orphaned and hrv well what future is there yeah it's a a very tough card to be dealt it's tough you know it it, it brings tears to my eyes so those are the people that i'm willing to treat free of charge right i think it's just my way of giving back pain forward and I owe it to society. I mean, I owe it to myself. I owe it to be able to lie down at at night and feel at peace, that Mm. I can enjoy my success knowing that I am giving back in my own way. Definitely. Well, and I think that's very important. Yeah, very important. So so it's amazing that you do all of that. And I know, I know, uh, what is it, no man's an island. And I... The, the interesting thing about walking into your practice and knowing a little bit of the history is your daughter, and, and it's, it's family involved. It's family it's run. It's completely family. Yeah, my brother is five years younger than me. He yeah. followed in my footsteps. And not yeah. only did he follow, but he progressed to become a specialist. Okay. Um, having said that, uh, he's my brother, but he happens to be one of the most eminent prosthodontists in the country. Right. Um, he is a prosthodontist who, who is a specialist dentist that's, does full mouth reconstruction. So we're talking okay. about uh, victims of, of, of trauma, of violence, where the jaws have been shattered and everything needs to be rebuilt and remodeled and reconstructed. So he's the man. He's the man. So he's done a lot of that type of work. Um, obviously, he's an expert in cosmetic dentistry, so I've got a great mentor who, I can, who I've yes. learned from. And then I've got my beautiful daughter, Chelsea, who followed in our footsteps as well. We've yes. also got a niece who followed in our footsteps, and she's an oral hygienist. So when we, you, when you come to Kai Dental Practice, you are really at Kai Dental Practice. Yeah, it's Kai everywhere. Yeah. And is that is it pushed, or is it encouraged, or is it Not just at natural? all. It was, and, and my parents weren't medical. Yeah. My grandparents weren't medical. Um, it's just something that happened by a process of osmosis. I mean, when you grow up in a home, and you hear about dentistry, which Chelsea obviously did, Yeah. I mean, I was shocked when it came to applying to university and she said, Dad, I'd like to do dentistry. I mean, I never dreamed. I could, I, I, for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's a weird profession yeah. to go into. Well, but How many people say I love going to the dentist? Yeah, it's nobody a, says that. But we're hoping to change that perception. Yeah. And I think Chelsea's um, revolutionized my practice. Okay. She's young, she's vital, she's um, uh, very trendy, she's... Um, 
you know, on, on, on Mark with her, her patience. The little kids love seeing her. Yeah. You know, little kids always love to come to a young, pretty girl uh, instead of this man looming over them in a white coat. <laughs> so we... we, we, we I we think so do I. Yeah. <laughs> we... we <laughs> <laughs> we try and we try and dispel that, you know. I wear ordinary clothes. I can now COVID the PPE has become a huge issue. Yeah. So to try and show children that we are a fun place and we covered yes. up like astronauts is not easy. No. Nah. But I mean, we have to do what we have to do. So we do make it a pleasant experience. You know, we encourage parents to come with their children. Yes. We encourage parents to sit in the chair and for the children just to see them. I mean, how do kids learn? By example. Right. So we quickly know that if a child is showing anxiety, it's coming from the parent. Right. I mean, tradition just tells us. Anxiety is in like towards the dentist and, and nervous. Yeah. Right. And the, as no matter how many times the mother and father tells you, I don't know where they picked that up from. I'm not sure where they've, we know damn well it's come from the home. Because okay. home is where life happens. Yes. Home is where life happens. He's got great sayings, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got to take a couple of these and just <laughs> yeah, and pencil them in somewhere. Pencil, like, and, and just we can credit him and say thanks, Doc. But <laughs> but it's the truth. It's the truth, you know. I mean, it's not school or uh, that's where life happens. What you learn from your parents. I mean, and I've been very blessed. I was blessed with the most amazing parents. Uh, we come from a very meshed family. Yes, very very close, and I'll never forget uh, the words of my late father. And he said to me. Just remember, no matter how old you are, no matter how well-traveled you are, and no matter how educated you are, you are never too old to take advice. Yes. And he really used to say it was like his mantra. Yes. And today I'm finding saying that to, to my two children. Right. And it's the truth. I mean, it's wonderful to be on a show called uh, Impressive Human, and I'm, it's very humbling. But, I mean, what is an impressive human? I, I think an impressive human is or a leader should be someone that remains teachable. Definitely. You know, remain teachable, remain humble, remain centered, remain mindful of your privilege. Yes. I mean, we're privileged. Definitely. I mean, we're not impressive humans for nothing. I no. mean, I, I've never regarded myself as an impressive human, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad we could. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a wonderful thing to be on a show like this, and I think it's brilliant of you to have come up with this. Thank you. No, we appreciate that. Thank you. The, the thing for us is... Most impressive people are generally humble people and they are yeah. willing to learn and, and to, to listen. Yeah. My, my Kung Fu teacher, who was on the show with us actually, he always said to me when I was young, Ilan, God gave you two ears and one mouth. Why do you think that is? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. No, so, no, you have to be humble. I mean, you can't be big headed and arrogant in this world. It's just, nah. it doesn't go with success. I agree. You know? So now, speaking of success, the, the, the other thing that, as I walked in, and I remember it just, it just sat like it hit me. There's just pictures of you and all these wonderful Miss South Africas with their massive, growing, bright smiles. Yeah. And when you see them on TV, how do you do that? Is it, a, is it extra work that gets done? Oh, absolutely. For them? Nobody, Tell us about it. Nobody is born with a Hollywood smile. Okay. I mean, we're all born with teeth. I mean, we develop teeth. Uh, but through nature, through nurture, Things can go wrong, and sure. if affordability is not there, parents can't give the child the optimum dental care. Mm. So these women, especially in South Africa, they yeah. may come across as superstars, yes. but believe you me, most of them are extremely humble, ordinary South Africans coming from disadvantaged backgrounds, Yes, okay. especially in the last few years. So um, I was recently interviewed by the Saturday Star, and they said yes. to me, Doc, over the years, which what is one event that really touched your life having now been mixing with these girls for the last seven years yes and i said it has to be one of the girls who was one of the top five mm. uh we started her dental journey she didn't win the pageant but she was in the top five and after the pageant i extended my gesture to her i said look you need a lot of dental work come and continue and she wrote to me, she says, Doc, if I could, affair, if, if I could afford the taxi fare to yes. get to you, I'd come and see you. But I cannot even afford the taxi fare. And you know, that's it, crazy. It and, and, a a and it's a, a Miss South Africa finalist. finalist. It, hit the ner it hit a raw nerve. And yes. it, it brought into sharp contrast and context of what these women are. They're using the Miss South Africa as a springboard yes. to, to better their lives. 
they're not all royalty. Yes, they treat it like royalty for those two months leading up to the pageant. Yes. And they're getting spoilt and there's pomp and ceremony and tiaras and glitz and ball guns. But behind all that, they are very ordinary women. I mean, Zazi Tunzi, who became a Miss Universe, yes. is openly, and she speaks openly about coming from a village, from a rural village. She stayed in a shack with her, her family. You it's know, an incredible I mean, it's incredible out of there. It's unbelievable. So yeah. to get back to your question, yes, they come to me with less than perfect smiles. Not terrible, because they wouldn't be in the top 10 or the top 16. If they, I mean, you've got to have at least a reasonable smile yes. to get to the top 16. Right. But yes, we take them on a journey of teeth whitening, of education, and obviously of with cosmetic improvements. So we don't go into detail, and, and like with any patient, there's confidentiality, sure. and we never advertise what we're doing. Yes. But sure, we've enhanced the smiles of Miss Worlds, Miss Universes, uh, Demi Lee, Zazi, Shudu, the current Miss South Africa, the current ladies, you know. But that's just one small part of my practice. I mean, sure, it's lovely to have their pictures adorn the walls because they are celebrities. Yes. And people come in and they want to see beautiful women and beautiful smiles. And you're like a Rembrandt to a smile. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I gave him one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So it's it's, four, it's it's a wonderful journey. Yeah. That's four one now. Eh? Yeah, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the uh, the just listening to you and the personality again. You're just you're more than what I ever expected as a dentist. It's a uh, again, it's impressive to me because thank you. The the person that I'm talking to is not introverted at all. You you have a great personality. The way you present yourself, the way you market your business. I mean. I don't know. I, I haven't looked, to be honest. But how many dentists talk and say, "Well, I was in the Saturday Star and talking about this." It's there's a personality to the whole thing. And the the question that I have for you is: In the beginning, was it like that? Have you always been like oh, this? No Did you ways. develop it? No ways. Look, I uh, I always had a good sense of self esteem. Yes. But I mean, I was quite introverted when I qualified. I never thought I was cut out to be a dentist. What did you want to be? Uh, or I did wanted you always to. Want to be uh, no, I wanted to do medicine. Okay. I wanted to do medicine, and I wanted to do psychiatry or gynecology. But um, my parents were quite influential in in my decision, and they sat me down and they said, "It's not an easy life to have a family life if you're a doctor and you're getting called out twenty four hours of the night." And right. those were the days when docs did calls. Yes. And they said, "Think about dentistry. It's a wonderful profession. It's not a life threatening profession in terms of dealing with life or death." Uh, you've got your set hours. And I must say their words have resonated with me over the years. I qualified and I followed the path. And then I started developing my own niche uh, with dentistry. And today I can thank them that they, they gave me good advice. It's taught me a lot. It's taken me all over the world. Um, I've lectured in, in other countries um, I was extremely fortunate to be invited to speak uh, in the House of Commons, not to the House of Commons, but right. in the House of Commons, yes. with a dental wellness trust, which was funded and founded by a colleague of mine from Wits, who now resides in the U in the UK, and she started a foundation called the Dental Wellness Trust, mm. and we at the moment are teaching up to fifteen thousand impoverished children in Kailicha two basic qualities all we do is go into the township when i say we not me we've got mamas township mamas that we've yes. trained they go into the township and they teach these children and this is before COVID. yes we teach them how to wash their hands yes and we teach them how to brush their teeth okay. and these are the two life skills that we can offer these children and they love it. They come into the um, hubs that we've created in Kailicha. they get toothbrushes they get soap they get a face cloth and, you know, it's just giving back small little things. So we want to roll this out nationwide, but it's not easy. No, because it never is. But what you're doing is amazing. I mean, to help people is, it's the ultimate. It's empowering. Yeah, it's, it's the empowering. ultimate thing to help somebody and to give back. And like you're doing, and it yeah. sounds like you're doing it in, in many forms. Well, we're trying, Elan, we're trying. I, I think that's unbelievable. I Thank really you. do. And, and uh, keep going. Thank like, you. It, uh, it's impressive. Hey, Bryce. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> so let Let's understand a little bit more about the journey because I'm sure some people will be listening to this and going, well, hang on, some of the sounds familiar to them. They might be preparing to study dentistry and 
Uh, they might be looking at, like you said, you were looking at uh, psychology, Medicine, yeah. all the ologies. Mm, so mm, mm. The, would you give anybody similar advice today where time is the one of the key things and, and quality of, let's just call it family life or which career to choose? What would you say to them? It's a tough, it's a tough decision. I mean, dentistry is not what it used to be, but right. then the world isn't the place it used to be. No, it's a crazy so place now. It's a crazy place. I mean, I qualified at WITS. It was considered one of the top five dental schools in the world yes. in the 80s. And very sadly to say, I'm sure you've seen it in the news, but dental or the oral hospital is almost ready to close. Right. Uh, whether it's from neglect, whether it's from corruption, whether it's from whatever the, the reason is. But, I mean, it's, it's tragic to see. It, it, it kills me. It hurts me to see that my alma mater is ready to close down. Mm. There's so many top academics that came from that institution. Worldwide authors, worldwide professors came from WITS. So I was taught by the best. So to answer your question, I don't think it's a bad profession, but I do think you've got to select your candidates for dentistry extremely carefully. Right. It's not a quick buck. You know, a lot of there is a perception out there that we are rip-off artists. That's a complete myth. It's an extremely expensive degree to do. Right. Um, and when you qualify, you really go into high, high debt. It's not like a doctor that needs a stethoscope and a script pad, and they can start diagnosing and seeing people. So the barrier to entry is massive. Massive. Right. Um, there's huge costs involved. And this is no disrespect to my medical colleagues. I'm no. just talking about from the dental yeah. aspect. Yeah. There's machinery that costs millions. Today, you cannot go into dentistry without a CBCT scan, a scanner, an X-ray machine, lasers. Digital um, technology has taken us into the new world. So yes. it's we're talking about millions. So very few students can come out of dental school and open up a practice. Right, Those so they've they got to come shadow, they've got to work for you, they've got to grow. And, and get loans, right. you know, going to debt for 10, 15 years. It's like buying a, mm. it's, it's a mortgage, it's a, it's a bond. So it, you need to be careful and know that if you're going into this profession, you need to love dealing with people. You need to have a passion for what you're going to do. You need to be able to con to concentrate in confined spaces. I mean, we're working in little square boxes and looking in little black holes and filling holes. And I mean, it's no walk in the park. No, it doesn't sound glamorous. And it's stressful. <laughs> it's sure. a highly stressful profession. It's well known internationally. There have been scientific papers that have proven that suicide is amongst the highest amongst dentistry. So I've actually got that as a note to ask you about. Yeah. And is it people, so people have dentophobia. Yeah, uh, that's actually a word. I googled it. Yeah, so dentophobia is a real thing. A fear of the dentist. But is it because of is it because of the pressure that the suicide rates are high, or is it because people don't like going to the dentist? Yeah, no, what no. do you think? Yeah, two different concepts. Mm. Dentophobia is when a person has a fear or a phobia yes. of visiting the dentist. Yes, and that can be broken up into further. Is it fear of the actual visit? Is it a fear of choking? Is it a fear of being hurt? Is it a fear of having somebody invade your personal space? I mean, there's different fears, but sure. it's a real fear. Yeah. So I've had to refer quite a few people over the years to hypnotists, to psychiatrists, to deal through this fear. To because get over the, and the anxiety is coming. Oh, there's so much anxiety about the, the visit. But now the suicide rate is no, no, separate because of the pressure. Yeah, suicide right. rate is amongst the dentist, uh, hopefully not amongst the <laughs> patients. But do you think it's linked <laughs> to, to how much anxiety people have when they come? Yes. Yeah. Because you as a dentist, think of it, you find you're meeting a new person every 30 minutes. Yes. Completely new. And within 10 minutes of meeting them, you are completely in their personal space. I yes. mean, how many people come yeah. into close contact with your mouth? Yeah. Exactly. Your lover, your spouse, perhaps your parent, and then this dentist. Yeah. So it's extremely intimate. Yes. So it is stressful. It is a situation that people find invasive stressful and emotionally charged. Yes. That affects you. As a dentist, it affects you. Right. Then it comes to the payment story. That's even more stressful. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Having having done your best to help this patient, relieve their pain, relieve their anxiety, given up your energy to help them and reassure them that all things are going to be right, they then question why they should pay for that service. 
Okay. He, you see, he's guiding me. I have to now. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, brilliant. See? Impressive again. So let's talk about payment now. Sure. So in your world of, of dentistry, and, and you've done this for so long that uh, there's enough of a track record to really dig in here, but when we talk about nagging panda, the purpose is to try and help people avoid awkward discussions about payments, especially if payment's late, but mostly to allow you to get on with what you do so that something's got an automated system behind reminding and nagging for payment. That's what Nagging Panda does. I think it sounds brilliant. I'd like to know much more. And we're going to tell you, definitely. But in your, so you've just said what you do is, is so intimate. It's so emotionally charged. And yeah. now you get to payment and it comes with a bill and the guy says, I don't want to pay. Mm. Or he says, whatever. What do you do? Tell us, tell us about what goes on in your Well, in your that's space. a tough one because it's taken me a long time to develop a thick skin. Yes. And you really do need to develop a thick skin because patients actually feel a sense of entitlement. They believe traditionally, that a third party should pay, especially in a country like ours. So, but why don't you send it to medical aid? Yes. Let the medical aid pay. Will you submit it to medical aid? This is what old South Africa used to be. There right. used to be a system when you were a, a toddler 20, 30 years ago where a patient could walk into a dentist, have top-class treatment, and walk out without a further glance at the account. Yes. And dentists would have to be... Uh, submitting it to third parties like medical aid funders and sit and wait for their money. And we were at the mercy of these third uh, party funders. I mean, they How long did it take to get your three, money? Three, four months. 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 And okay. I mean, you know, and I know that cash flow is king. Absolutely. You cannot function a business and be profitable and happy and successful and not have cash. You Definitely need, not. You need cash flow. Absolutely. And that's why I'm really keen to know more about nagging panda because I've, I've been the nagging panda. Exactly. I've had to train my staff to become nagging pandas. And I mean, it's, it's, it's debilitating. It's humiliating. It's belittling. I mean, it's so demeaning for you as a professional to have to talk about money. Yes. I mean, dentistry used to be what they call the noble profession where money was never spoken. Yes. A patient came to you, you had your white coat on, you spoke like a gentleman, you had a bow tie on, you did your work, they left you, and you never had a, a moment's discussion. The word money never entered into the rapport. Right. And you were hoping to get your money in a few months' time. And so they called it the noble profession. I mean, yes. where can you have a life like that? Where, who, who can run a business like that? No. So it's impossible. So today... Cash is king, cash flow is vital, yes. and debt is a burden. Yes, a I agree. A huge burden. So, so let's talk about this because it's one of the things we speak about often in Nagging Panda. Is and, and sorry, but that is what adds to the suicide rate is debt. Debt, okay. A huge factor in suicide. Okay, very interesting, yeah. very interesting because yeah. what you're saying is it's not just the pressure of the actual no, work. No, it's financial pressure. Financial pressure that's actually pushing people over the Absolutely. edge. Absolutely. Okay. We've, we've got debts to meet. We've got, uh, you know, we've got… Uh, Bills to pay. Bills to pay. Sure. Our, our consumables cost us a fortune. Everything's imported. Everything's expensive. Yeah. So it's an extremely important p that you get paid at the end of the appointment. Right. So now if um, – okay, so let's talk about this. So much that I need to talk to you about. This is great. The, the process of, of training your staff to actually talk to people about money, because it's such an awkward discussion, staff become a very – interesting turning point if they deal well it's great if Correct. they deal badly you've got a big problem absolutely i've seen it with my own experiences absolutely. where and we we tell the dog parlor story which you'll you'll hear about one day but the principle is if your staff your your staff it could be your admin lady it could be whoever in your business sure first of all they have to take time out of what they're doing to go deal with this sure but if they say the wrong thing to your customer absolutely your customer may never come back absolutely it's much more expensive than the current bill Sure. What, so how did you go about trying to, to educate your staff? Well, I attended um, business coaching. Mm. I've spent a lot of time and money investing in business coaching, executive coaching, learning how to talk about money, yes. how to approach this very tricky subject. And I've taken that training and trained my staff. But staff are staff. They're not dentists. They're not highly educated people. So it is very difficult. I mean, you need to have staff that have strong sense of self, mm. song, a strong sense of worth. They need to believe that what you're doing is you deserve to be paid for. 
and it can, can quickly come across that your staff are uncomfortable about talking about money. Sure. So you've got to be, be, teach them to be assertive, teach them to believe in your worth so that it comes across to the patient to say, look, the doctor's done the work. He quoted you before. You agreed to the quotation and the work has been delivered. Are you happy? Are you satisfied? Can you please pay the bill? Mm. But with all that training, you still get patients that I forgot the story comes out. I forgot my wallet in the car. I'll mm. do an EFT. That usual check is in the post story. Yes. So any method that's going to help me collect my funds then and now, I'm on to it. You, you're keen. So keen. Let, let's talk about it because one of the things that we, we talk about in Nagging Panda is the cost-effective nature of automation. Sure, so sure. what we do is we provide a system, which is an online system. You Eventually, you'll be able to do it on your phone as well. But the, the idea is you'd log in, set up, a, we call it an escalator because it goes up, mm, right? It mm. can escalate in, in its tone and in its, in its aggression, if the, for lack of a better word. But the idea is you set up what it is you want to say to your customer and automate it. So on the day of that you've given me an invoice, hi, Lan, don't forget to pay. And here's a button, click to pay. Because that's, is this online? It's all or, done or on, on, you on set a it tablet. Up, you set it up online so oh. that it, you can use it on a tablet or a computer, whatever you okay. want. But the principle is more you set up to remind your customer, don't forget to pay. He has an email, he has an SMS, or we can make a phone call for you so that your staff don't need that thick skin. Sure. But the concept is if you provide your customer, and, and let's see if you'd enjoy doing this, but if you provide your customer the ability to pay you easier, would they pay you? So if there were a pay button, and I'm a good, a decent example, there was an invoice, I have to go add you to my bank details in order Correct, to pay as you. as a beneficiary. But because of that, it's, even though it's not a major, it still delays me mm, from actually mm, taking action. Mm. Whereas if you sent me that email in the morning and the afternoon and the evening, mm. or however often you wanted to, mm. or an SMS with a link, and you say, click to pay, you're set up as a... Um, whoever as a merchant on, mm. on the pay button and I can take quick action and pay you. Mm. Do you think it's something you would use? Absolutely. Would it, it would work in your world? Look, I've uh, fine-tuned my debt collecting. So mm. there's very little outstanding debt. That's excellent. Yeah, I, I, I must say, I've kept it down to less than 3% of my turnover is, is, is outstanding debt, which is very good. Most very dentists good. are running at 15%, if not higher. Right. So, yes, I'm still interested in it, but I mean... What's your average amount of debt because we when we talk to percentages your turnover could be a million rand a month which three percent becomes a lot so yeah if if we talk about it runs value, into hundreds of thousands so at 400 rand a month yeah. this is a massive win for you yeah, to absolutely automate. absolutely so cost effectively it doesn't matter what you pay your staff they, it could never be as little as 400 rand a month yeah so and that's not us promoting it's more of us looking at our our solution that we're offering to the market to mm. say there's no reason that you should be going unpaid mm. because like you say it's people, people dealing with people, and if one doesn't pay the other, the world can't go around. Exactly. It's just, it's just the nature exactly. of the payment flow. Mm, mm. So, inside it, of is, your debt, is that sorry? What you, what the charge is for Nagin Panda? For you could use it for free, which limits you. So it's uh, it's limited to a number of invoices and things. But otherwise, mm. four hundred rand a month. And if you send SMSs, you pay for SMS. Mm. But if it's email, it's just four hundred rand a month. Right. So it's the the solution that we bring is cost effective, and mm. we're trying to take business to a much simpler automated point where you don't have to deal with that terribly awkward Stress. conversation Stress. Mm. so that we take care of it for you. Mm. I want to ask you, when you talk about debt collection, again, I don't know if, if dentists out there are as skilled as you are where they know their bad debt rate, where they have a debt collection process, all of those things. Do you ever end up at an external debt collector? Yes. A third, a like a third party absolutely, where you hand over. Absolutely, absolutely. The worst thing is to blacklist somebody. But, I mean, sometimes you're forced to do it. Yes. You know, but promise and promise and promise and promise. There's a limit to how much you can trust a human being. Sure. So, unfortunately, there are times and there are, there are lawyers and attorneys that deal just with medical and dental debt. Yes. So, yes, uh, it's been not many times, but there have been times when we've had to hand over a patient. And, I mean, it's soul-destroying because, as I said, every patient becomes my friend. Yes. It's you know, bit, again, that's that it's difficulty. It's the most terrible. Ex yeah, it's, it's it's terrible. So inside of what we did in, in Nagging Panda is we built in the debt collectors so that if your invoice goes unpaid, you don't even have to do anything. You could have automated it to say, if I'm not paid in X number of days, send it to the debt collector yeah. and they'll actually take it on for you. So 
do you think that that service in your world and in the dentistry profession is something useful? And you don't have to say yes. We enjoy the conversation. No, I think there's a place for it, definitely. Okay. There's a place for it, and especially in d- with dentists that are still charging what is the so-called medical aid tariff. Yes. Which I don't fall into that category, thank God. But there are numerous of my colleagues that are struggling and drowning in debt because they do the work, the patients are so spoilt, they've been coming to the dentist for 30 years, never having to put their hand in their pocket. Mm. The medical aid then for some reason rejects a, co- a code or a quote, or there's a, you're at the whim of some dental expert that works for a medical funder. And I've got mates that have actually had to close, close down their practices because they're in so much debt. They just couldn't And it's because it. the medical aid is saying, we don't cover that, That's you've then got to aspect. go chase the, the, yeah, the patient. Yeah, and even if they hand over the debt, the lawyers aren't very successful uh, very often. They can't trace the client. The clients change their address. Their, you know, if you're a shark, you're a shark. Mm. You're going to get away with it. You, If you're a professional con artist, you can get away with it. Yeah. So I really think there's a place in the market for what you're explaining to me. Brilliant. Okay, really, well, really it's do. fantastic feedback. I mean, very interesting to hear about such high rates of, of problems in such an interesting profession where you need, you need your dentist to help you. Yeah. So it's it's... Quite fascinating to hear in reverse that people don't want to pay at the end. Look, we talk, we're not talking about the every person. No, of course not. I mean, thank God there are amazing people out there, yes. um, intelligent, educated um, people that respect who you are and respect your work and, yes. and gladly pay for the service. But, I mean, we're talking about the, the patients that aren't of that caliber and that yes. quality. And, I mean, some, sometimes it's circumstantial. People just cannot afford your rates. Yes. But then there's cheaper dentists out there. You know, you don't, you get what you pay for. And do you tell guys up front, this is what I Absolutely. charge? Absolutely. Okay. That, that's a very important point. And I think that's why my debt is so low. Yes. So my staff have been trained that when a new patient calls in for a, an appointment. Quote them. They are told absolutely up front, this is what doctor charges. Uh, we do expect payment at the end of the appointment. Is it okay with you? Yes. And where they get asked a million questions, but what about my medical aid? What can I do? Can't I do an EFT? And they are trained how to answer in a very respectful but assertive way. Okay. So you're a new patient. We haven't developed a rapport with you yet. In years to come, the doctor will use his discretion. But at the moment, you're new to the practice and we courteously ask you to please pay at the end of the appointment. So they are crystal yes. clear when they arrive. Yes. So there is no reason for them to get to the reception desk after I've provided the service and they were fully informed and then say, I forgot my wallet yes. or I'll do an EFT. Yes. But yet it still happens. Absolutely. And, you, and you've provided well, the service. Well, things do happen. I mean, yeah. people do forget their wallets. It happens. Be, yeah. Yeah. But there have been instances. I mean, recently this week, we quoted a lady completely and fully. She agreed verbally and on text. She arrived and my PA said, you are going to go through, but you're having a long procedure, which you, is going to necessitate sedation. So Dr. Norman's going to sedate you. Do you mind if we take the payment now? Because at the end, you'll be sedated and you'll be transported home yes. because you can't drive. She took great umbrage to that. Mm. She said to me, she said, I've never been so insulted. Don't you know who you're dealing with? And you don't mean any insult And I it. said, but we don't know who we're dealing with. You are a new patient. We're getting to know you, but I'm running a business. Mm. I've incurred laboratory fees. I've spent an entire day booked off for you. I've got my labs waiting hand and foot to serve you, to give mm. you your smile. I mean, those ladies are only doing their duty. Yes. Please don't make it a personal thing. They're not attacking you. They merely asked for the money up front because you're going to be sedated. Not because we don't trust you. Yeah. But people come to you with a chip on their shoulder, they're in a stressful environment. And, I mean, it's all smooth now. She's come back and she's happy and laughing and giggling and loving her smile. But yes. this is what happens, Elon. Yeah. You know, it's money is um, it's always going to be a controversial topic. Yes. And, I mean, in the times we're living now, it's just uh, it's, it's, it's a nightmare, actually. Yeah. You know, I mean, people don't have money. Yes, and it's at, tight. Yeah, it's tight. COVID has affected everybody. Yes. But it's affected the dentists terribly. I mean, nobody came near a dentist during the height of COVID. No, I'd imagine not. I stayed away. Absolutely. Well, I stayed away from everyone. And yet, it, and yet it was a myth because if anyone is working in an aseptic environment or dentists, I mean, yes. 
since time immemorial, we've worn gloves and masks and aprons and and and, and coveralls and, and. You're actually right. They they've been COVID exactly. forever. Yeah, exactly. Th- this yeah. is what we we try to tell the dental association: get the word out to the public yes. that we are the safest people to come to. Yes. We we throw away everything that's disposable. We're never going to reuse a suction tip or a cup or a bib or. A, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, so your environment is fantastic. It's fantastic, yeah. but we had to get that out to the public. Interesting, eh? And so, then. Look, Doc, it's, it's an amazing story that you're telling me. I just, <laughs> really? Uh, it, it's really amazing. Am I opening your eyes? <laughs> definitely. I, I see a whole new side to dentistry, uh, definitely. And I hope, I hope that this discussion opens other people's eyes to dentistry. I hope especially so. to, uh, you know a lot of people, but you couldn't have yeah. met them all yet. So I hope <laughs> no. we introduce some people to you. Please go on. How do people get hold of you? What? Because uh, I know you're... You're a, a marketing man, so is there social media for you? What, yes, How yes. do people get hold of you? Well, my practice name is the Kai Dental Practice, yep. spelled C-A-H-I, Dental Practice. So yes. I'm on Instagram as Kai Dental Practice. Okay. Um, I'm personal Instagram as Dr. Norman Kai. That's yep. D-R, not Doc. Yep. D-R, Norman Kai. Um, we're in Parktown North. We've got a great practice, um, multidisciplinary. We've got gum specialists, root treatment specialists, oral surgeons, oral hygienists, physiotherapists, psychologists, psychiatrists. So it's a multifactorial mm-hmm. center. Um, I can give you our phone number, but I'm not sure what you. Uh, yeah, you d- uh, we want you to tell people how to get hold of you. Okay. And we'll put it at the end of this. Uh, at the end of the video, we'll put all of the information okay, that well, you give us. So I'll put it on the screen. You don't even have to say it now. It's fine. Right. Okay. I'll, I'll let everybody know, and if they okay. need to, it'll be in the, in the, in the email uh, description. Thank we'll you. We'll give everything there. I really value this, and I appreciate it. No, it's great, then, Doc. It, it's really been fantastic to have you on the show. It, it's a, such an amazing story. You are an impressive human. You you hit all the the, the dots on the impressive human show. It, it's just there: entrepreneurship, business, motivation, leadership, the lifestyle. Look at you. So Thank you. Lord. It's all there. And so are you. <laughs> Thank I you. think you're a great young man, and Thank you've you. got a great future ahead of you. Thanks, Doc. Brycey, fade to black.